for more great videos and learning tutorials, or to download the exercises that go with these videos, please visit our website at www.createthenet.com. That was www.createthenet.com. Hello, and welcome to part three of our Basics of CSS course. In our last video, we saw really quickly how to create some tag styles. Now, the three tag styles we created for H1, H2, and H3 here are actually identical because I want all the headings to have the same font and the same font color. I am later going to specify the font size, and I'm going to want that to be individual. But for right now, I'm always going to want to make sure that the font family and the font color are consistent from heading to heading. Now, the problem with doing it this way is twofold. One is, I've got to enter in three styles. So whenever I want to make any change, I've got to make that change in a couple different places. That's a lot of extra work. Plus, if you change one and forget to change another, you're going to have a problem because your headings aren't going to be consistent one to another. So CSS has a solution for that. And what we do is we make what's called a grouped selector. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to highlight H2 and H3 here. And I'm going to go ahead and delete the contents from those styles. I'm going to leave the styles in there because I do want to add something specific to these two, the font size. But then what I'm going to do you know, my problem now, go save here, is that H1 and H2 have lost that style. Just H1 has it. So I'm going to come back into my style sheet. I'm going to come after H1. I'm going to type a comma and then do H2 and a comma and do H3. In this way, I can say all three of these tags should have the same font and the same color. So now I have a grouped selector. And I'm going to go ahead and right click and save and then come back into my basic HTML document and you'll see again my level 2 and my level 3 items now have the formatting applied to them. Now, the font and the color should be consistent. But one thing that I do want to be different from size to size is going to be the font size. So I'm actually going to come along here, and I already have a style specific for H2 and H3. I'm just going to go ahead and create one for H1. Now, you can measure fonts inside of CSS in a number of different ways. The two main ways to measure fonts are with percentages, or proportions, or with fixed units. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and just stick with fixed units. In other videos, we're going to talk about the difference between proportional font sizing and um, fixed font sizing. So go ahead and look for um, that video. And the style that I'm actually going to use here is font size. And I'm going to, I should say, the style property that I'm going to use here is font size. And I'm going to say my H1 should be 24 pixels. And you'll see I put the number 24 in, and PX identifies that as a pixel. Then I'll type a semicolon there. And just to be fast, I'm going to go ahead and highlight that and copy it. And I'm going to paste it in, sort of indent it over, into both of these places. And then just really quickly change the font size there. So we have 24, 16, and 14 there. And I'll go ahead and say save. And then come back over to basic HTML. And you'll see there's my main level heading. There's my second level heading. And there's my third level heading. And actually, second and third look a little too close in this view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over to styles and I'm going to change font size here from 16 to 20. And then I'll go ahead and right click and save. Always remember to save your changes and then come back into basic HTML. And there we go. I can see that that's much bigger than my third level headings down here. 
so we can create individual tag styles. We can also create grouped tag styles just like this. And that allows us to only make changes once and have it affect multiple tags. And it also helps us with consistency because we don't have to make changes in multiple different locations. Also, if you're interested in seeing the high definition 1280 by 720 videos, please go to createthenet.com. When we upload these videos to video sharing services, they always shrink the video size down and decrease the quality so they come out a little bit fuzzy. If you go to the uh, website, you can see the full resolution versions of these videos.